Good morning, my Real News Media TV family. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning, and I'm wishing for everyone a wonderful and a blessed Sunday. And in the news this morning for December 24, 2023, roads blocked in Portland flooding cleared, says NWA. The National Works Agency says roads that were blocked because of flooding linked to two consecutive days of heavy rains in eastern Portland have been cleared. Manager Communication and Customer Services at the NWA, Stephen Shaw, says works will still be underway over the next 24 hours to remove debris and improve road conditions. The floodwaters have receded somewhat and we have been able to respond with equipment, including a backhoe and a multigrader, to try and make it easier for persons to traverse the areas that have been impacted, he told the news Saturday evening. The rains have wreaked havoc in sections of Rio Grande Valley area, leaving residents to contend with damaged roadways, flooded homes and devastated farmlands days before Christmas. The severe weather which started Friday battered the communities of Long Lane, Durham, Coopers Hill, Pig Dry, Seamans Valley and Windsor in the Rio Grande Valley area. Trees also blocked sections of the North Coast Highway were also impacted. Shaw said the areas were affected by a combination of flooding, landslides, and the fallen rocks. Member of Parliament for Eastern Portland, Anne-Marie Vaz, had also indicated that a work team was mobilized with heavy-duty machinery, has been deployed to clear blocked roadways, remove debris, clean drains, and address land slippages. This is rather unfortunate, but no one has control over the weather. This is not the kind of Christmas present that I want for my East Portland family, she said. The newly asphalted roadway from Peak Dry to Seamans Valley suffered a significant damage as the White Cane River overflowed, inundating the thoroughfare and destroying several hectares of banana, planting, pumpkin, pepper, and other crops. King Sunman charged for stealing phone. A 29-year-old man who allegedly robbed a man on Half Witchery Road of his cell phone earlier this month has been charged over the incident. He is Nicolas Berry of a Spanish Town Road Kingston 11 address. He has been charged with robbery with aggravation. Two other men implicated in the incident are still on the run. The Half Witchery Police reported that about 1.30 p.m. on December 1, the complainant was walking along the roadway when he was approached by Berry and the two other men who robbed him of his cell phone and an undetermined sum of money. The police were summoned and Barry was apprehended. The other two accomplices escaped. Barry's court date is being finalized. Trainee cop held with a contraband at Hanover police lockup charged. A trainee cop was arrested and charged after he was reportedly held with a contraband at the Hanover police headquarters lockup in Lucy. He has been identified as 28-year-old Constable Dalmar Smith, a probationer who worked at detention and courts in the Hanover Division. Smith was charged with possession and dealing in ganja, as well as breaches of the Corruption Prevention Act on Friday. No court date was given for the accused. Reports are that about 7.10 p.m. last Tuesday, Constable Smith was on duty at the Hanover headquarters cells when his supervisors observed him acting suspiciously. He was subsequently searched before he entered the cell block. However, nothing illegal was reportedly found. The trainee cop was then escorted to his white Toyota Fielder motor car parked on the compound. During a search of the vehicle in the constable's presence, a bag containing vegetable matter resembling ganja was found along with a number of cigarettes, lighters, rizzler, tobacco, bleaching cream, bottles with rum and cell phones. Further reports are that the policeman handed over $25,000, which he reportedly admitted he received as a payment to deliver the items to individuals in custody. Constable Smith was charged after statements were collected and a consultation was done with the Jamaica Constabulary Forces legal officer. 3. Arrested Fallen Gun and Ammo Seizure in Kingston Three men have been taken into custody after a firearm and several rounds of ammunition were seized on East Street in Kingston on Saturday morning. Reports from the Denham Town Police are that about 3.10 a.m., lawmen were on patrol when they spotted the three men. It is alleged that upon seeing the police, 
one of the men threw an object, which upon retrieval was discovered to be a Smith & Wesson 9mm pistol with a magazine containing 11 9mm rounds of ammunition. All three men were taken into custody. However, their identities are being withheld pending further investigations. Bunting blasts the state of public health care system worse the shape in decades. Opposition Senator Peter Bontin has come out as strongly against what he says is the poor state of the country's health sector. Senator Bontin, addressing the upper house earlier last week, claimed that the public health care system is in the worst shape and the most rundown it has been in decades. According to him, the one area that the Ministry of Health and Wellness is best at is public relations. Those persons who have to interact with the health system are forced to suffer due to a lack of resources, he charged, citing video clips of hospital patients with drip needles in their arms, lying in passageways and on wooden benches, or sitting up in chairs for days. Senator Bontin added that questions remain regarding the Cornwall Regional Hospital Rehabilitation Project, which he suggested must have by now earned the title Mother of All Cost Overruns. He reiterated that the rehabilitation project started with a budget of $2 billion and a timeline of about a year, and now has a budget of $14 billion and climbing. Video clips of hospital patients with drip needles in their arms, lying in passageways and on wooden benches, or sitting up in chairs for days waiting on a bed to free up, have become commonplace in social media. And I don't, I'm not relying entirely on social media. I recently visited a university student who had been taken to Mandeville Regional Hospital. And I was horrified that after three days, she was still in the casualty waiting area where conditions appeared similar to the pictures of hospitals we see in Gaza or some other war zone. The Cornwall Regional Hospital renovation must have by now earned the title of mother of all cost overruns. It started with a budget of $2 billion and a timeline of about a year. It has now reached $14 billion and climbing, and seven years have gone. Both cost and the length of time to complete continue to escalate. We have seen nothing indicating that the promised expansion at Bustamante Children's Hospital is taking place. We have seen reports from no lesser persons than the former chairman of the board of the University Hospital of the West Indies of improper ministerial interference in the operations of UA. Cronyism is rampant. In contrast to the claims made by Senator Bontin, Health and Wellness Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton has asserted that much has been achieved over the last year to improve the delivery of health care. Dr. Tufton, speaking with the news, said the complaint of a lack of bed space is being addressed through investment in infrastructure. He added that the reform of primary health care will ease the pressure on hospitals. So in the build-out of supplies, we are dealing with additional beds through things like Western children, breaking ground for Spanish town, moving next month, hopefully. There we're going with, you know, Maypen, St. Anne's Bay, with the COVID wards have added some capacity, maybe about 250 or more uh, beds, about 4,000 in the system. So we're, 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 we're seeing some increase. But I will say that if we do not control the demand by managing prevention and premature illness and premature mortality, it is going to be an almost impossible task to provide enough. We're going to roll that out with some expansion at the health center level, more services being offered, some of the curative services to keep people out of the hospital or to avoid them deteriorating where they need a bed. And we'll comment more on that in the new year, but we're well advanced with that. We're hiring more doctors, nurses, as you would have heard, which will also help the process. So the both sides have to be addressed, but I am confident that more is being done to try and address that, that situation.